Michael Norman has one of the most interesting careers of any athlete currently competing. He finished fifth place at the 2016 Olympic trials in the 200 meters as a high school senior and established himself as potentially one of the greatest future sprinters in the United States. In the following years, Norman initially lived up to those expectations by winning NCAA championships and even breaking a world record. But as quick as he rose to the top, the track world arguably turned on him as he was unable to perform when it mattered at the biggest stage on two consecutive occasions. Though recently, we just saw him win world championship gold in the 400 meters, arguably living up to those expectations that the sport placed on him. So let's dive into Michael Norman's career and see how he had one of the best comebacks of any athlete in recent times after the track and field world almost completely turned their backs on him. Throughout his high school career, Norman was always on the rise and seen as one of the top sprinters in the country. Competing for Vista Murrieta, by his junior year in 2015, Norman managed to run 45.19 seconds, which was an NFHS record for high school and the overall sixth fastest high school performer in history. 2016 though was really his introduction to the wider track and field world as he would compete in both the 200 and 400, but the 200 meters is where he really shined. Running times of 20.21, 20.15, 20.14, and a winning time of 20.06, Norman went on to finish fifth place in the 200 at the US Olympic trials, putting both him and Noah Lyles, who finished fourth place, in the spotlight as the next two great American sprinters. Though he didn't make the Olympic team, he did go on to compete at the World U20 Championships where he won gold in the 200 meters in 20.17 seconds. So the consistency in the event, his improvement year after year was all key and set a great benchmark for what he would be able to do at USC in his first year in the NCAAs. Now in 2017, considering what he had done in high school, many looked at Norman as one of the top 400 meter runners in the country and a likely contender to dominate the event in the NCAA, even as just a freshman at USC. Though he didn't dominate, he did run extremely well throughout the season. He improved his 400 personal best to 45.15 seconds at the Pac-12 championships, then again down to 44.97 and 44.88 at the NCAA championships, where he would finish fourth place. He went on to compete at the 2017 USA championships, where he would again drop his personal best to 44.60 in the semifinals and eventually finish seventh place overall in the final with 44.80. Again, Norman was just a freshman, so this boded well for what he would be able to do in the future, and he drastically stepped things up in the following year. 2018 was basically the real breakout year for Norman as a true star and the next up in the 400 meters. Indoors, after running a time of 45 flat in early February, which was the seventh fastest time in the event ever, Norman came to the NCAA Indoor Championships and broke the 400 meter world indoor record running 44.52 seconds, breaking the 13 year old record of 44.57 set all the way back in 2005 by Karan Kalemet. This proved Norman was living up to the potential that many saw back when he was competing in high school. And he did even better outdoors, opening his season with a personal best of 44.53 and later improving down to 44.40. But at the 2018 NCAA Championships, Norman would lay the hammer down with an NCAA record of 43.61 seconds, taking down the record set just a year ago by Fred Curley. This continued the high that Norman was on and proved he was not only the real deal, but also likely the next greatest 400 meter runner in the world. After NCAAs though, he didn't immediately go pro. He did run a few 200 meter races over in Europe, including the Paris and Lausanne Diamond Leagues. There, he would run times of 19.84 and 19.88 respectively, with the former being a huge personal best for him. 
This set things up very well for him as he would end the season as a top 400 meter runner in the world, sign a pro contract with Nike, and go into the world championship year ready to compete with the world as a professional. Now coming into his first full professional year, there were extremely high expectations for Norman. Everyone saw him as the gold medal favorite, especially considering he was the 400 meter world leader in 2018, and the world record holder Wade Van Niekerk would be out for the season due to injury. And at the start, Norman did not disappoint and continued right where he left off from 2018. At his season opener on April 20th at the Mount Sac Relays, Norman ran a huge personal best of 43.45 seconds in the 400 meters. Not only was it a personal best, it now made him the equal fourth fastest performer of all time, sharing that time with Jeremy Warner. He was continuing to ride the high of the previous year, and now the conversation was not only about world championship gold, but also if the world record was in play. Many saying 42 seconds was very, very possible. A month later, on May 19th in Osaka, Japan, Norman ran the 200 meters in 19.84 seconds, equaling his personal best from Paris the year before. A few days later, he won the Stockholm Diamond League in a relatively modest 44.53 seconds in the 400, but it was on June 6th that year that he shocked the world. At the Rome Diamond League on June 6th, Michael Norman would be going up against Noah Lyles, who had finished ahead of him the last three times they had raced in the 200. But this time, Norman got the best of Lyles, running a time of 19.70 ahead of Lyles' 19.72. This was a huge performance as it was a massive personal best and also continued to show the range and quality that Norman was able to put down on the track. Norman was the clear favorite for 400 meter gold in Doha that year, and in one other race before USA's, Norman won the Prefontaine Classic 400 in another modest 44.62 seconds. But little did the track world know, we would be in for a huge shock. At the 2019 USA Championships, Norman led the qualifiers through the rounds, but in the 400 meter final, Norman was taken down by Fred Curley, who ran 43.64, beating out Norman's 43.79. So an overall fast race, but not nearly what the fans expected. Though it wasn't expected to a degree, Curley was the 2018 Diamond League champion and had a personal best of 43.70 from 2017. So showed that he was very capable of running this time. This would be a huge turning point for Norman, he remained a bit vague about what was going on, but seemed to indicate he had an injury, which is why he lost. Let's be clear though, Norman just ran his third fastest time ever in the event and was still going to compete at the World Championships. But this is where the questions surrounding Norman really started to arise. Interestingly enough though, Norman went on to the Diamond League final in Brussels and won the 400 meters actually ahead of Fred Curley. And though he only ran a time of 44.26, this put him back in the conversation as a favorite in the event. Enter the Doha World Championships, and there seemed to be some trouble from the start for Norman though. In the first round, he did win his heat, but in the final 100 meters, he had to push a bit harder than expected as he was only in third place with about 50 meters to go. Again, he was able to push through and get the win in his heat. But the real surprise came in the semifinals. Norman in lane four, was out very fast, but by the time he got to the back straight, most could tell something was a bit wrong as he wasn't really pushing and moving past anyone like he usually would. At 200 meters, it was clear that Norman was completely off as he was not in contention with the rest of the field at all. By the time they entered the home straight, Norman was in last place, basically just running to the finish and clearly not capable of qualifying for the final. This was a huge disappointment and many look back to that April race at Mount Sac, noting that Norman might have run too fast too early. But regardless, we later found out that Norman was truly dealing with a hamstring injury that prevented him from being ready when it mattered, not only at USA's, but more importantly, now here at the World Championships. Despite this only being his first World Championship appearance though, many began to label Norman as unable to perform when it mattered most. And unfortunately, this perception would hold over the next few years. 
2020 unfortunately turned out to be an off year as we know the world essentially went into lockdown and the Olympics and almost all track had to be postponed. But this may have been a blessing in disguise for Norman as he would have more time to recover from his injury. But after things began to open up a bit and a few meets were held around the world, Norman took the chance to run one single fast race. Many athletes did have to run some races to fulfill contract obligations, specifically Nike athletes, which led to some interesting distances and races at AP Ranch in Texas in July. The one race Norman chose to show out though was in the 100 meters where he ran a time of 9.86 seconds. That improved on his 100 meter personal best of 10.27 set all the way back in 2016. It also made him just the second athlete in history to run sub 44, sub 22, and sub 10, only behind the 400 meter world record holder Wade Van Nieker. Though this did spark everyone's interest and indicate that Norman was at least healthy again, the questions still remain. Norman could run fast, but when it comes down to a global championships and winning a medal, can he perform when it counts? Again, the Olympics have been postponed to 2021, so we would have to wait one more year to truly find out. Now, the Olympic year. The 2021 Tokyo Olympics would finally be going down, and this was seen as a big deal as Michael Norman's mother was born in Japan. With it being such an important year, Norman went all in on the 400 meters. He opened his season with an indoor 400 meter win in 45.34 seconds in Staten Island, New York. Then he ran three outdoor races prior to USA's, winning all three of them. 44.67 at the USATF Grand Prix, 44.40 at the USATF Golden Games at Mount Sac, and 44.27 at the Doha Diamond League. Many still said that Norman was lacking that punch though, that finishing strength he was known for in previous races. At the US Olympic Trials though, Norman came away with a win in 44.07 seconds. So not sub 44, but people saw that as a step in the right direction and he had been improving his time in every race throughout the season. After USA's, Norman raced one more time in Hungary, but he unfortunately finished third place behind reigning world champion Steven Gardner and Texas A&M graduate Bryce Dedman. That brought about the questions again if Norman was truly ready to win an Olympic medal, let alone an Olympic gold medal. Now, at the Tokyo Olympics though, Norman didn't necessarily struggle initially, but maybe expectations for him were just extremely high. In the rounds, he finished second place in both his heat and semifinal. That eventually got him lane eight in the final, but it was a huge accomplishment for him to make his first global final. In that Tokyo Olympic final, all eyes were on Michael Norman, at least many in the United States were extremely intrigued on what he would be able to do. He was in lane eight, right outside of Steven Gardner, Michael Cherry, Anthony Zambrano, and Cronny James. Though Norman went out extremely fast over the first 300, showing that he was putting his all into the race and going for something special, he unfortunately though came off the curve into the home straight and significantly faded over the last 100 meters eventually ending up only fifth place, again missing out on a global medal. And he was extremely disappointed after the race. Not getting gold, not getting onto the podium, and unfortunately the expectations that many placed on him were not fulfilled. Leaving the track world with more questions than answers, this led many to say that Norman just wasn't capable of really performing when it counts on the global stage. Well, now in 2022, with the World Championships now scheduled to be in the United States, all eyes were again on Norman. The question everyone was asking was if Norman would finally be able to not even win gold, but just get on the podium and win his first international medal. Before the USA Championships, Norman ran just three races. The first of which was a 200 meters at the USATF Golden Games at Mount Sac on April 18th. Norman did lose to Fred Curley in that race, but his time of 19.83 seconds was his second fastest time ever in the event, so clearly he was off to a good start. But many remember 2019 when he ran that very fast 43.45 at the same meet. And of course we know things didn't pan out later that year. So the questions still remained. His next race was in Tokyo, Japan, where he ran his 400 meter season opener in a comfortable 44.62. Now his third race and final race before USA's was the 400 meters at the Prefontaine Classic. Here, 
Norman was going up against Karani James, but he managed to come away with the win in a time of 43.60 seconds. That was his second fastest 400 meter time ever and truly put him back on the map as a gold medal contender. But again, many still were hesitant to say he was a favorite, especially considering the reigning world on the Olympic champion Steven Garner was healthy and in the mix. At the USA Championships though, Norman showed out again. He ran a time of 43.56 seconds, again running his second fastest time ever, not far off his personal best of 43.45 seconds. Though he was challenged to the line by champion Allison of Florida, Norman was further cementing himself as, if not the gold medal favorite, then at least equal favorite with Steven Gardner. Now with the world championships just three weeks away, Norman chose to skip any more competitions and instead buckle down with training. Just before those world championships though, Steven Gardner of the Bahamas, the reigning world and Olympic champion, pulled out of the meet due to injury. That opened the door for Norman to arguably be labeled as the favorite for the 400 meter gold, but also probably put more pressure on Norman for him to actually win that gold medal. Well, enter the 2022 World Championships in Eugene, Oregon. Norman is able to comfortably cruise through the rounds, making it into the final. His closest competition, with Gardner now gone, was three-time Olympic medalist Karani James from Grenada. In that final, Norman in lane four, Karani James in lane three, James was out fast and on a mission to get the win. He pushed Norman all the way around the track with both of them running even through about 350 meters. But in the final meters, Norman was able to pull slightly ahead and grab the win and the title of world champion. This was not only his first ever gold medal, but also his first ever medal of any color essentially dispelling the questions throughout his career if he could perform when it truly matters. Though Norman has now won world championship gold, his career is still in its early stages. He is only 24 years old and there are three consecutive championships coming up in 2023, 2024, and 2025. So go in the comments below. Let me know what you think of Michael Norman's career so far. Did you think that he would be able to come back from his down years in 2019 and 2021? Do you think he'll continue to win golds over the next three championships? And will he improve on his personal best of 43.45 or maybe even break the world record in the 400 meters? Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and be back again next time. Thanks.